In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Let us pray. O oh, gracious God, in the hearing of your word, in the experiencing of this familiar story, once again, O oh God, come to us. Speak to us. May this story, this wondrous story, be filled with amazement, with challenge, and with transformation for each one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Whether you read a newspaper in its paper form or digital form, you certainly know that a newspaper is made up of sections. Perhaps some of you enjoy reading the entire paper, but I'm sure others of you are more likely to focus on a specific section or two. These sections can vary from day to day, but in most larger newspapers, like the Plain Dealer, there are sections that include topics such as world, national, local news, sports, weather, entertainment news. This evening, I want to focus on the local news section, the news that is close to home the news that involves people we are more likely to know, and that personally impacts you and me and our neighbors. If you ever read the local news of the Chagrin Valley Times, then you have an idea of the type of news that I want to share with all of you this evening. And here it is. The eternal word of God the light of all lights, the one who cast the stars in their courses at creation and flung the planets into being, this God has put on flesh and moved to town. The town I'm referring to is not simply the one located in the Middle East or the one in eastern Pennsylvania or the light park in Geauga County, the true light, which enlightens everyone, has moved into your neighborhood, my neighborhood. This local story is up close, and it is personal. It's about God's love being gifted to each one of us. It's about receiving something we need more than we need anything else. In the Gospel of John, we are told that God's word that spoke creation into being, put on flesh, and came to live among us. Jesus is God with us. Emmanuel. God is with us. Then that means we don't need to go to another town, or a state, or a country on the other side of the world to find God. Of course, God is there, but God is also right here. God came to us because things between us and God were not so good. God tried to get through to us by sending us prophets, 
to tell us the truth about God's love. God also gave us the Holy Scriptures, the great stories of faith. But we humans couldn't seem to comprehend the truth of God's abiding presence and God's desire to have a close, loving relationship with us. We always had our reasons for keeping our distance, and sin certainly got in the way. But part of it was because we just didn't get it. Judgment and punishment came more naturally to us. So getting our minds and our hearts around God's love was more difficult. So God came to us in Jesus, and we finally began to understand the power of God's personal presence and the transformational impact of God's merciful love. In the summer of 2005, I spent two weeks in Saltillo, Mexico, on a mission trip. Twelve of us traveled from Ohio to Mexico to work on a Methodist church. Because much of the building had been completed in previous years, we focused mostly on finishing touches, like putting in pipes for heating, painting, some needed minor repairs. We also spent a day doing repair work and painting at an orphanage. We took with us a few supplies. Mostly we had donated money to purchase the supplies we needed once we got there. Of course, we could have just sent the money down to Saltillo and let Pastor Jose Luis buy the materials and hire people to do the work. But by going there, I became very aware of the inherent power and impact of incarnation as God worked through the 12 of us. It was our personal witness of working side by side and worshiping side by side with members of that congregation that I believe had the greatest impact, not only on the 12 of us, because it did, but also on the members of that congregation, as well as the people in the community, in the neighborhood, who saw us there working each of those days. Consider for a moment the lives of those whom you have had the opportunity to personally impact over the years because you chose to go to someone, to stand beside, to care for, to work and worship and to sacrifice for that someone. This is what God did for us in Jesus. And as followers of Jesus, it's what we are called to be for others as well. Tonight, we celebrate that it was God's close, personal presence that made all the difference, that changed everything for us. In Jesus, God came to us, stood beside us, walked with us, sacrificed for us. Tonight is a celebration of the incarnation, God becoming human in Jesus. Jesus impacts our lives in ways that the prophets and the stories of faith could not. For some, this local news of incarnation may actually feel sort of threatening. After all, if God is way over there, out there, far away, it's much less likely that our lives will be personally impacted it's much less likely that we will have to change anything or do anything. For many, and perhaps even some of us here tonight, it can be more comfortable to keep God at a distance. On this holy local news night, you might want to consider if there is something in you that perhaps prefers the distance. Perhaps there are parts of you, thoughts, behaviors, that you would rather God not touch. You are comfortable with these parts. If truth be told, you even like them. And yet those parts, 
those behaviors are not what God wants from you. Sometimes it is easier, it is more comfortable to keep the one who wants to move in with us at a distance. But God became flesh and lived among us. Before the story is completed, we will see God walking among us, speaking to us, teaching us, guiding us, forgiving us, healing us, suffering and dying for us, and raising us to new life. God in the flesh will lead us down a path we could not, would not, have taken on our own. In the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, we hear the hosts of heaven sing, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them as their God, and they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. The story ends, not with our being moved to some other worlds, separated, but rather with the kingdom of God, the heavenly city, descending to this world. It ends with this world being renewed and redeemed by the presence of God. The gospel story is not about how we climb up to God, but how God chose to come down to us and how God continues to be made known through us. That is the end of the story, the point of it all. God will be with us, and we shall be with God. God will be at home with us. This God with us is the point of Christmas and at the heart of the good news. It's why we gather this evening to sing some of the best and most loved songs of our Christian tradition. It's why we gather to celebrate year after year the birth of a baby. God is not distant and uncaring. God is not content to live apart from us and to just let us live our own lives the way we want to live them. Through Jesus, God has made it clear that his desire is to be close and to be very personal. Therefore, tonight's big news story is, as I said, local news. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. God has come to you and to me. Thanks be to God. Let us pray.